corn pudding. What's that? What? Are you trying to tell me that you've never heard of corn pudding? She's never heard of corn pudding! Oh no. It's a song. You just started another song. Hey there, I'm Mark Ellis, and welcome to a euphonious new episode of RT Essentials. Since the dawn of talkies, movie musicals have dominated Hollywood. From The Wizard of Oz to Singing in the Rain, and more recently, La La Land and Tick Tick Boom, one thing is for sure. We love a world that spontaneously breaks into song and dance, even if that never happens in reality except during a flash mob or what I just performed. Today we'll explore how our society's love for musicals translates on the small screen. I'd say the explosion of melodious shows across all networks and streamers sings for itself. In fact, almost every series we'll be discussing today premiered in the last decade, proof that the yearning for tuneful content only gets louder with time. Though not every show on this list is technically a musical, at least not in the traditional sense, they do all contain classic musical numbers or are centered around music and the industry itself. Also, for legal reasons, we can't play full-on songs from any of these shows. Can I sing it? You don't want me to. Roger that. But we'll do our best to get your toes tapping with the sound of this voice. Now, without further ado, these are our selections for the best musical TV shows. Glee. Hey, where's the hate? Not the point of Glee Club, Sue. And sliding in first is the smash hit Glee, originally airing on Fox in March of 2009 and running for six seasons, 121 episodes. The show was set at the fictional William McKinley High School, where an optimistic teacher named Will Schuster heads up the Glee Club known as New Directions. Not to be confused with One Direction, who have sadly broken up. I'm still not over it. Couldn't you guys have worked it out? Like, I'm not that upset, but really, Zane? You're just gonna bounce like that? <sighs> Sorry, back to Glee. Ambitious and talented students find strength, acceptance, and most relevantly, their voice within the Glee Club and also enjoy a respite from the harsh realities of life. As Mr. Schuster helps the students in every way that he can and pursues the collective goal of taking the group to nationals, he faces opposition from a conniving cheerleading coach named Sue Sylvester who tries to sabotage the club at every turn. Why no Britney, Britney? Because my name is also Britney Spears. What? What the hell is she talking about? My middle name is Susan, my last name is Pierce. That makes me Britney S. Pierce, Britney Spears. I've lived my entire life in Britney Spears' shadow. I will never be as talented or as famous. I hope you'll all respect that I want Glee Club to remain a place where I, Britney S. Pierce, can escape the torment of Britney Spears. The series was conceived by Ian Brennan, who based the concept on his own high school experiences in a choir. Brennan had originally written Glee as a feature-length film, but Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk suggested that it be produced as a television series instead, so the film concept was scrapped and the script was rewritten for the TV format. At the time, Fox had one of the biggest shows on the planet, something called American Idol, which is, I guess, still a huge show, but it moved to ABC in 2018. Anyways, Fox was well aware of the demand for music-driven content and apparently picked up the pilot for Glee within hours of receiving it. The series featured numerous covers of classic songs sung by an ever-expanding cast and ranging from hits like Teenage Dream by Katy Perry to Somebody to Love by Queen. Critics like Entertainment Weekly called the show so good that it blasts past any defenses you might put up against it and that it will not stop until it wins you over utterly. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. If you want her, go for it. Maybe I will. Mm. Maybe I will throw my saddle on that filly. Yeah. Take her for a ride around the paddock. Yeah. Oh yeah, you gonna ride that filly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Men are disgusting. Yeah. Rachel Bloom and Aline Brosh McKenna wrote, created, and directed the rom-com musical drama Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which premiered on the CW in October of 2015. Bloom also stars in the lead role of Rebecca Bunch, a successful and driven New Yorker who seems to have it all. The upscale apartment, the partnership at a prestigious law firm, but still, she feels like something's missing. And after a chance meeting with her former romantic interest, Rebecca impulsively decides to give up her life in New York and relocate to West Covina, California. Over the course of its four-season run, the show penned 157 original songs, averaging two to four per episode. Like I mentioned in the intro, we love a world where characters spontaneously break into song and dance, and Bloom and McKenna took that idea and ran with it. Or maybe I should say, danced with it? 
Most of the songs are sung by protagonist Rebecca, or by characters she's directly interacting with, and the musical device is actually used to drive the plot forward and often melodically replaces necessary dialogue that would otherwise just be conversational. Wow, you look go... Wait a minute, where's the dress I bought you? Oh, right, yes, I donated that to the West Covina Middle School Drama Department because only a 13-year-old girl could fit into it. What makes Crazy Ex-Girlfriend even more of a standout is the juxtaposition between the exuberant performances and the serious recurring themes. Themes like subjects and ideas, not like theme songs. You get it. Though this is a good time to point out that the show featured an entirely new theme song for each season. All of them were spectacular, I might add. But what I meant is that Crazy Ex-Girlfriend portrays themes like mental illness in ways that no other show or musical ever has, notably psychological traumas and how they influence relationships and personalities. There's this one 80s-inspired ballad called A Diagnosis, where Rebecca sings the words, I'm aware mental illness is stigmatized, but the stigma is worth it if I've realized who I'm meant to be. Absolutely brilliant. All these elements combine to make Crazy Ex-Girlfriend a critical success, with The Guardian calling it wild, ambitious, and full of powerful women not only defined by who they love, but how far they're willing to go for it. Empire. Oh, do you remember this one? Because I do. Yeah, I sent tapes from the inside back and forth with you while you worked on them out here. <laughs> Empire was created by Lee Daniels and Danny Strong for Fox. It starred Terrence Howard as Lucius Lyon, hip-hop artist and CEO of Empire Entertainment. Lyon has remained at the top, unchallenged by his underlings, until a medical diagnosis predicts he will be incapacitated in three years and the power-hungry sharks start to circle. Lyon is forced to decide which of his three sons will take over, Hakeem, Jamal, or Andre. All the while, the situation gets even more complicated when Lyon's ex-wife reappears, demanding that Lyon compensate her for taking the fall for the drug running that financed his early career. Empire's been called a mashup between The Lion in Winter and The Godfather, set in the world of hip-hop music. Lee Daniels made his directorial debut at this show, but had directed several feature-length films prior, including Shadow Boxer, The Paperboy, The Butler, and of course, Precious, which earned him a Best Director and Best Picture Oscar nomination. Lucius! Hi, Grandma! Hi, baby, where's your grandfather? Lucius! 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 She playing you. E excuse me, we are in the middle of planning a wedding. Excuse me! You in the middle of getting your gone. You too, fake-ass Jackie O. Kick rocks! It's family business. So although Daniels was well-established in the movie business, he felt that his musical tastes were too dated for a show like Empire, so he consulted with Timbaland to help craft the music for the series. Initially, there was some uncertainty about whether the show had the potential to connect with a wide audience, but those ratings do not lie. Empire's premiere ranked as Fox's highest-rated debut in three years. It was also the first primetime broadcast in the previous 23 years to see a viewership increase week to week in its first five episodes. In its 2014 to 2015 season, it surpassed The Big Bang Theory as the highest rated scripted program and saw the highest rated debut season finale since Grey's Anatomy in 2005. Empire ran for six seasons, 102 episodes, received numerous accolades, and has been praised for being audaciously honest on black issues and credited for changing the look of US TV. Galavan. There is a potion for reviving the dead that I've been working on. But I've been missing one rare ingredient, so it's never been fully successful. What is this ingredient? I will climb any mountain, battle any foe, slay any beast. A gray hair from the beard of a middle-aged man who is pure of body, untouched by a woman. Rest in peace, my friend. I shall miss you. Dan Fogelman created and wrote Gallivant, a fairy tale comedy that features the music of award winning composer Alan Menken and the lyrics of Glenn Slater. It follows titular character Gallivant, a dashing hero who embarks on a quest to restore his happily ever after when he loses Madalena, the love of his life, to King Richard. Gallivant is well prepared to use his many skills to win back and avenge his beautiful lady, but his adventure gives rise to endless twists, turns, and challenges. Similar to Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, this show's characters will suddenly burst into Broadway-style musical numbers several times in each episode. The plot is absolutely ridiculous, described as the bastard child of Monty Python and the Princess Bride by actress Mallory Jansen, but despite the show's whimsical tendencies, some of the featured tunes still manage to tug at the old heartstrings. 
One example is the song, If I Could Share My Life With You, sung by the characters Chef Vincenzo and Gwim. Though the song maintains a lighthearted charm, it's surprisingly heavy in its message of dreaming big in a small world and learning to embrace the now. The king is having a secret meeting where I'm to serve snacks and a light refreshment as soon as the croaks of the frogs usher in the raven's last call. So like nine o'clock? Yeah, nine o'clock. Galvan was also known for frequent cameos from well-known celebrities such as Ricky Gervais and Kylie Minogue and his recurring cast members that included John Stamos and, are you sitting down, Weird Al Yankovic. Yep, Weird Al plays the head monk of a group that has taken a vow of singing. If that isn't reason enough to watch the show, then I don't know what to tell you. Gallivant ran for two seasons, 18 episodes, and received generally positive reviews, with the Boston Globe writing that if you're a fan of musical theater, then you just might find some enjoyment in this cheery eight-episode miniseries. And fun fact, the second season of Gallivant has a 100% perfect tomato meter score, so I'd say yeah, there's a lot of musical theater fans out there. The Get Down. Yeah, why is that? Is what politicians should be asking. But who's got time for questions when y'all skiing up on Aspen? Bros get gunshots to the head and all y'all swerving us is Aspen. My mama was so lovely, she would've made your head spin. Level the playing field and y'all would see who would really win. And yeah, I got anger. But I don't let it take me down cause my mama taught me better and she holds me up when I fall down. Multifaceted filmmaker Boz Lerman teamed up with Pulitzer winning playwright Stephen Adley Gurgis to create the musical drama The Get Down, which premiered on Netflix in August of 2016. The series is set in the 1970s, when New York was at the brink of bankruptcy and disco was dying out. The rise of hip-hop is told through the lives, art, music, and dance of a group of young people in the South Bronx. In addition to Lerman and Gurgis, the show is produced by Sean Ryan, Nazir Jones, better known by his stage name, Naz, and acclaimed costume designer Catherine Martin, who, having won four Academy Awards, remains the most awarded Australian in Oscar history. Lerman's vision was ambitious and no expenses were spared to make this show as authentic as possible, which is particularly difficult when creating a period piece. Y'all want to rumble like it's the old days instead of riding around in a flow, Jay. You got one shot. Get it on the humble. Make your battle a DJ rumble. rumble. <laughs> Hip-hop legends Grandmaster Flash, Curtis Blow, Nas, and DJ Cool Herc were deeply involved in the show's development, even hosting a hip-hop boot camp to help educate the younger actors. Flash worked closely with a production designer, making sure the gear was true to the era, down to the mixers and turntables, and even how he'd hold his headphones. Sony even opened up their entire vault so that Flash could comb through original multi-tracks and pull out songs he wanted to remix. The music was the crucial element of the storytelling, much like hip-hop was a crucial element of that time and place. Unfortunately, a show that sets such a high bar comes at a high price. The Get Down was Netflix's most expensive series to date, costing roughly $120 million to produce, which surpassed the original budget of $7.5 million. It's just a few pennies over, it's change you'll find in the couch. The show was canceled after only 11 episodes. But its legacy lives on thanks to the supreme music, vibrant cast, and thoughtful set design. We are Lady Parts. No, no, nine. Stop, stop. Why are we stopping? We sound <laughs> profoundly <laughs> harsh assessment. No, you know what? We sound worse than <laughs> What's worse than <laughs> Emeroids. You know what? I think we sound great. Boris Johnson? No. We sound <laughs> on a cosmic level. Athletes foot, puberty, camel toe, the plague, black lung, vegan cheese. Shut up! Has. We Are Lady Parts is a British sitcom that originally aired on Channel 4 in May of 2021. It's the brainchild of Nita Manzor, who created, wrote, and directed the show. It follows Amina Hussein, a geeky biochemical engineering PhD student who becomes the lead guitarist of Lady Parts, an all-female Muslim punk band striving to get a proper gig. The band's fierce frontwoman, Sarah, sees something in Amina that the other band members can't. So, Sarah offers to set Amina up with potential romantic matches if she agrees to join the band, and now Amina finds herself torn between her straight-laced university friends and the edgy members of the band. Manzor has said that this series is somewhat autobiographical, having grown up in a Pakistani Muslim family and forfeited the path that was expected of her, becoming a human rights lawyer, to pursue a career in the arts, specifically filmmaking. You, you have done it brilliantly, babe. You've got the family unit and the art both coexisting in happy mm. symbiosis, right? Mm. Daughter, I think we should depart from this place before we choke on the fumes of this 
toxic masculinity. Okay, bye, 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 Uncle Bye, baby. Manzor is inspired by women she came across at various art collectives and musicians who are expressing the fullness of their identities. She wanted to create a show that highlighted such personalities and felt that up until this point, there hadn't been proper representation of Muslim women in television. Stating that Muslim women on TV were mostly portrayed as oppressed and lacking agency and without joy and humor. I think we can all agree that Mansoor accomplished exactly what she set out to do, because this show has managed to pack more humor into its first and so far only season than most shows will in their entire lifespan. So it's not too surprising that We Are Lady Parts boast a 100% tomato meter score and that critics like USA Today have called the show pithy and outrageously funny. Also word on the street is that season two is on the way. Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Should we grab arms and jump up and down right now? I think we should. I just remembered these balls are see-through. <laughs> Next up is the dramedy Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, which originally aired on NBC. Jane Levy stars as Zoe Clark, a whip-smart computer coder who, after an unusual event, magically begins to hear people's innermost wants and desires through popular songs. Okay, I know, unusual event is super vague. Basically, an earthquake occurs while she's getting an MRI, and an expansive playlist of songs on file are downloaded into her brain. It happens all the time. I don't even know why I had to explain it to you. Anyways, strangers, friends, co-workers, and family members are now unknowingly singing their feelings just to Zoe, who thinks she's losing her mind. After some guidance from her DJ neighbor Mo and a breakthrough with her ailing father, Zoe comes to terms with her condition and realizes that it just might be a wonderful gift after all. You are... Punky Brewster. Garbage? Oh my god, of course you are. Now it goes without saying that you can't name your show Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist and not feature some straight up jams, or as the cool kids like to call them, bangers. And yes, this show is banger packed with incredible performances of cover songs like Taylor Swift's Shake It Off and Tears for Fears' Mad World. Well, it's actually cast member John Clarence Stewart portraying Simon singing Gary Jules' version of Tears for Fears' Mad World. Yes, that's mad confusing, but the important thing to note here is that Stuart, Levy, and the rest of the main cast actually do all of their own singing and dancing, and that's nothing short of extraordinary. The series ran for two seasons, 26 episodes, but was ultimately canceled by NBC due to falling ratings. But that didn't stop the show from developing a cult following and being hailed by critics as an ambitious concept brimming with joy and compassion that hits the right notes. Schmigadoon! This basket is going to Henry for two dollars and two bits, going once, going twice. Hold on there, Mr. Mayor. Twenty dollars. Sold to the newcomer, Mr. Skinner, there for twenty dollars. Hello, Schmigadoon. Sorry, not you. I'm not calling you a Schmigadoon. I don't really even know what a Schmigadoon means. Oh wait, it's a play on the title of the 1954 classic Brigadoon, which starred Gene Kelly. But you'd already know that if you're a musical aficionado like Schmigadoon creators Cinco Paul and Ken Dario. In fact, this entire series is a parody of, and an homage to, the musicals of the 40s and 50s. It follows backpacking couple Melissa and Josh, who get trapped in Schmigadoon, a magical town filled with singing and dancing townspeople. The two learn that they can't leave without finding true love, which they thought they had already had. What? We can't leave. It's like magic. We're in an actual musical. Please, God, no. The magnificent cast includes comedy legends like Keegan-Michael Key, Cecily Strong, and Fred Armisen, and the series was produced and directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, the man behind the Addams Family and the Men in Black trilogy. Cinco Paul actually wrote all of the original songs for the series, which adds up to roughly two dozen, spread over only six half-hour episodes. Paul attributes his musical prowess to his upbringing, having grown up listening to his mother's Broadway cast recordings and having played piano for musicals while he was an undergraduate at Yale. The New York Times perfectly penned this review of the show and its main characters. The Joshes of the world are unlikely to ever warm to Schmigadoon, but to my fellow Melissas, dust off your character's shoes, our time is now. High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. This is the moment when the creative team begins to give the show over to the cast, which is strangely emotional, actually. But Miss Jen says that's a life in the arts. Well, that and almost constant unemployment. Disney Plus brings us High School Musical, The Musical, The Series, a mockumentary drama created by Tim Federley and based on, you guessed it, the High School Musical film series. 
Set at a fictionalized version of East High School, where the original movie was filmed, the series introduces members of the drama club and their faculty advisors as they perfect their produced musicals and work toward the nerve-wracking opening night. Romances blossom, friendships are pushed to their limits, rivalries ensue, and lives are forever changed as these students discover the transformative power that only high school theater can provide. Disney started developing the series way back in 2017, approaching Federley, who drafted a pilot utilizing the documentary-style device that has risen in popularity thanks to films like This Is Spinal Tap and Documentary Now. Is that really her phone? Hold it to your ear like a seashell. You'll hear echoes of V-Hudge crushing the B-flat on When There Was Me In Here. Or you can let me disinfect it first. Yeah. Okay. In 2018, Disney officially gave the production a series order for a 10-episode first season, and the rest was hip-shaking history. The soundtrack for the series includes new songs and renditions of songs from the original High School Musical film, with cast member and pop sensation Olivia Rodrigo penning the song All I Want and co-writing Just For A Moment with Joshua Bassett. High School Musical, The Musical, The Series is not just a fun title to say, it's received mostly rave reviews, with NPR writing that this show will hit the spot for those over and under 12 who enjoyed the earnest, silly pleasantness of High School Musical. Additionally, critics have praised and highlighted the cast performances, notably Rodrigo and Bassett. Season 3 is expected to be released this year. Girls 5 Eva. Look who's these timing. Oh, it's Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, I hear you have a big performance tonight. Oh, yeah, we do. I just want to say I'm super excited for you. You're going to do great. Oh, thank you, honey bunny. So have a great show, and congratulations to all. Because Kev from The Boys Next Door thinks you're too pretty for college. Uh, this has a cameo? She bought a cameo uh, from her uh, husband to make us think he's uh, FaceTiming. Good so lord. So thanks for being a fan, stranger. Oh, wow, okay. And last, but certainly not least, is Girls 5 Eva, created by Meredith Scardino, who's written for several TV comedies, including The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Mr. Mayor. This series centers around a one-hit Wonder Girl group from the 1990s who reunite after a song of theirs gets sampled by an up-and-coming rapper and they suddenly have another shot at stardom. Only thing is, they now have to balance spouses, kids, jobs, debt, aging parents, and naturally, shoulder pain. Scardino wrote the lyrics for most of the original songs featured in Girls 5 Eva with the help of executive producer Jeff Richmond, who also composed the music for the Mean Girls musical and happens to be married to one of the funniest people on the planet, who also happened to executive produce this show, and also happens to play Dolly Parton in the character Dawn's Imagination. Yes, it's Tina Fey. Who else? So you and Stomp? We're a girl group. Uh, well, your knee has absorbed years of sustained damage. You need a knee replacement. <gasps> no! You can get a second opinion, but it will signal to me that you don't trust a female doctor. <sighs> Additionally, lead actress Sarah Barias, who plays Dawn, also contributed to some of the songs, taking influence from the music of NSYNC, Destiny's Child, and ABBA. Scardino received an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Writing for a Comedy Series, and Girls 5 Eva has been hailed as an excessively absurdist show, packed with truly funny parody songs and performances that rival the best on air. And there you have it, our selections for the best musical TV shows. As always, we couldn't cover every series that fits the bill, but there's plenty more episodes of RT Essentials coming your way, so I'm sure we'll get there soon. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Mark Ellis, and this quote goes out to all you aspiring music-minded artists out there. Follow every rainbow till you find your dream.